the best part? Absolutely no due dates. You can keep everything included in your kit. Visit brklib.com slash to go for a full list of our current kit offerings. Kits will be available starting the second Monday of every month on a first come first serve basis. Now let's get crafting. All right, let's start with step one, prepare. So what you're gonna do is first, you're gonna choose out your pattern, get your hoop ready, as well as the colors that you need of thread and your Ada cloth as well. You can use your tapestry needle to actually do the cross stitch. And scissors to cut it because you don't want the length of the thread to be too long or else it will get tangled. So once you've measured out roughly 12 inches worth of thread, you're going to separate the pieces so you have two individual threads, as you see here, pulled away from the rest of the threads. So then separate those all the way, and those are the ones that you're going to thread through your tapestry needle. It's okay if it takes a little bit of time. It takes some practice to actually get the threads disentangled easily. So once you have your two threads, um, I like to lick the end of them and then sort of twist them together like this so it's a little bit easier to thread through the eye of the tapestry needle. It's okay if this takes a couple of tries, but you're gonna pull both threads all the way through. And technically some cross stitch videos will tell you that you can just start without tying the end of the thread, which is totally fine. Um, but I prefer to tie the end because I just find it a little bit easier. But some people say it's neater to not tie the end of the threads. And typically what I do is I just loop it around my fingers and then pull the threads through. And I do that three times so the knot is thick enough that it won't go through the Ada cloth. So now your needle and thread are ready. So it's time to put your cloth in between the hoops. So you're just gonna loosen the screw here at the top and take the two apart. And over the bottom hoop, you place your fabric. And once it's there, you can just slide the top hoop right over it. And you can sort of tug the pieces of fabric if you need to make it a little bit more or less taut. Once you're actually doing the cross stitch, you can see how I just pulled it a little bit tighter here and then tighten the screw so that the hoops don't move at all while you're working. All right, and with that, you are ready to start step two, stitching. So for this, I started by doing the traditional method of cross stitching, where basically you're making almost a backslash shape um, in between the sort of squares here. So you'll see that you do half a stitch and then you go up through the next hole and do another sideways stitch. And you can kind of look at the dots as a guide and think of them like squares because those are gonna be what corresponds with the guide for whatever pattern you choose. So I'm just starting at the bottom left of the pattern here um, and doing the traditional method of just going up a couple of stitches and then once I've gone up a couple, then I'm going to go back and sort of tuck. You'll see it looks a lot neater when you do it this way than the way that I typically do it, which is what you'll see for the rest of the video once I'm done with this example sort of uh, row. But I'll show you how I typically do it here in a second. But yeah, so you're just going to go up 
and once you sort of reach the top of a couple of stitches, I think I did five here. Yeah, so just a couple right here. Then you can go, I'm just counting those to make sure it's the right number. And you'll see that it looks pretty neat in the back. This is why some people don't like to tie a knot in the thread because it doesn't look as neat in the back, but I am of the belief that it doesn't really matter what it looks like in the back because not that many people are gonna be looking at it, especially if you hang it up. Um, but so you're just gonna now do the same thing but going the other direction down with that same sort of sideways stitch. It's okay if it gets caught on the cloth. You'll see that happened to me a lot. I made my thread a little bit too long. <laughs> Not a big deal. go down the row it's making these nice neat X's and that's the shape that you're gonna want to emulate for the rest of the cross stitch is that X pattern hence the cross and cross stitch so then once you've finished a row um, and I kind of did this a little bit wrong in the video um, but you've got your nice neat row in the front and then when you flip it over you've got these nice sort of neat lines and what you can typically do is just tuck your needle into those but I accidentally made it a little tight so you'll notice I struggled a little bit with actually tucking it under the stitches but the idea is that you can slide your needle right under those and then keep stitching um, or you know if you need to change colors that's when you can sort of thread the stuff under the back of the stitches but Again, that's not typically what I do, but that is um, the sort of traditional way of going about it. All right, so once you're able to sort of get your, um, your thread underneath a stitch, you're good to start your next row. And I usually like to try and do one color at a time. So I just followed the outline on the diagram going up and now I'm going to show you what I typically do when I cross stitch which is that I just make each individual X shape one at a time instead of looping back around because I find it a little bit easier to tell where I've already like stitched and where I am in the pattern if I just go like X by X. Um, so yeah, I typically just go over and under and then you don't have to double back at all. Um, but you can use whatever method you find easier. It's totally up to you. Other people tend to count so you'll just go up however many stitches and then you know that you're going up five or over two or whatever but again it's just whatever you find easiest fabric feels like it's not taut enough for you to easily stitch through it, you can just flip your hoop over and pull the fabric a little bit tighter, which is what you see me doing there. All right, so then once you've finished with your first color, or once you need to get sort of more thread, as you'll see here, I was starting to run out of thread after doing the side of the design. Then what you can do is flip it over and um, just tuck the thread underneath one stitch. 
um, or multiple if you're going the more traditional route of the sort of backslash shape. Um, but I typically just tie off a knot at the end and then snip it. And then from there, um, replace the thread and do the same thing that we did at the beginning of the video, where you separate two threads from the, um, the others and then put them through the eye of the needle. And this is also what you're gonna do when you switch colors. It's okay if you have a bunch of extra thread. You can either use that for other projects or if the threads are too short, it's totally fine to just throw away. So then you'll just do the same thing again if this is the method you want to use where you can tie a couple of knots at the end so it doesn't go through the fabric and then you're ready to get started again following your pattern. So now, just like before, um, you're gonna do exactly the same thing that I just showed you to switch colors. Um, as you can see, I did the sort of darker outline first. Um, I like to do darker colors first because they're a little bit easier to see, but it's totally personal preference. So changing the color of thread, you're just gonna do the same thing where you separate out those two strands into roughly 12 inches long and then tie it off at the end and just start usually in the bottom and work your way up um, of the when you're looking at the pattern but again it's just whatever is easiest so again tie those three knots on top of each other and then you are good to start your next color. Also, um, a trick that I like to do, if I ever have discovered that I have done a stitch wrong, like there's a wrong color somewhere and I missed something on the actual diagram of what color goes where, typically you can just kind of stitch over it. There's usually enough room that you can cover up a stitch with a different color. Ideally, you won't have to do that, but that's just uh, something I have done in the past. So yep, then you're just gonna fill in the remaining space with any other color that you have. So once you complete that last stitch, you're just going to do the same thing to tie it off by tucking it under another stitch, and then you're done. Thank you all so much for celebrating your fandom with us today. Our next kits will be available on Monday, October 11th, so mark your calendars. We would love to see what you made with your kit, so please feel free to share your project with us on social media using the hashtag brklib to go the next batch of kits will be available starting October 11th at any library location. Keep an eye on our calendar and social media for more information about those future kits. The Tween and Teen Kit Program is generously sponsored by the Friends of the Brookline Public Library and the Brookline Library Foundation. Thanks again for joining us. See you next time. Bye!